So I thought I'd just make a quick video about a new feature in the model, which is the ability to simulate in frequency domain. So until now, um, we've had various simulation modes along here. So we've had steady state and transient and things like that. Um, and if we just click run, it would have run the, the simulation and we can plot the JV curve. So here's a JV curve, here's a JV curve. And we get something out like that. Now, the two new icons, so there's one the simulation mode called impedance spectroscopy and there's a frequency domain simulation editor um, so uh, if we look at the we look at so the mode called is which is impedance spectroscopy currently imps and imbs um, aren't implemented and if you want to use those give me a give, give me an email uh, but currently only the um, impedance spectroscopy is implemented so that's with excitation with a voltage and measuring a current so these are the frequency points we're measuring or we're going to simulate, um, so there's about I don't know, 40, 40 or so there. Um, and then uh, this is all sets up the frequency domain simulation, so what voltage it's running at, um, and we're going to excite with the voltage, and we're going to measure a current um, and modulation depth of 0 0.02 uh, volts. Um, we're going to bit two periods. And this is the circuit diagram that's going to simulate. So you've got the ideal diode, a bit of a capacitor, a bit of a shunt resistor, and then some external load. Um, and that's that. So let's just uh, put the simulation into impedance spectroscopy mode and click run. And what it's doing now is it's counting up in uh, frequency, so it's effectively exciting the device with um, with a, a voltage perturbation, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Um, and then it's it's measuring the current and calculating the sort of phase differences between that. So it's now uh, spat out, so it's spat out various files. So let's have a look at frequency domain. So FX real, which is a plot of frequency against the real part of the signal. I'm going to press Shift L uh, to, to make the axis logarith the axis axis logarithmic. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, then we can look at, say, for example, the so that's the real part. Let's look at the imaginary part. So that's the imaginary part. We can look at the um, resistive part of it. So it's all com converting into resistance convert it into capacitance. Um, we can look at the phase, there's the phase. We can look at the real plot against the imaginary, so these very uh, characteristic half moon plots, just pop that up there. Uh, the, and you can see it's all labeled in terms of frequency there. Um, and yeah, that's it really. So that's all a full, uh, full frequency domain simulation. Now, um, what I'll say is, so, that this this model doesn't make any assumptions um, about about well no, that's not quite true but um, quite often when you simulate frequency domain what you do is you effectively assume the system's linear about a set point this model doesn't do that it actually solves um, full uh, full time domain simulations not assuming the system's linear um, so if for example uh, so let's go back here. If, for example, you didn't want to perturbate with a, with a small signal of 0 0.02 volts, if, for example, you want to look at massive perturbations of 2 volts, or 0.2 volts, or even, even 1 volt, you'd be perfectly happy to do that um, because it's not linearizing the system. It's actually solving a set of time domain equations. Now, um, you notice, I mean, the simulation took, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 seconds to run, so we, um, we just run it again, so I don't know how long this takes. So, you know... Uh, maybe 40, 50 seconds. Um, and that, that's the price you pay for uh, effectively s solving all the, all the equations explicitly. So let it just finish. Now, what we can do though, because we're on a modern computer, is we can um, run this over multiple cores. So here at the bottom, this is showing me what, um, what CPUs are doing. Uh, there's one CPU very busy here recording my voice, uh, and the rest are basically idling, doing nothing. So if you go to simulation hardware and set the number of threads um, that the model can use to say, I don't know, I mean, you could, I, it might, I, well, I've got 32 cores, so I'm, go I'm going to just put 24 just, just for the sake of it. Um, if you've got a very, very fancy machine with sort of 100, uh, 164 threads or something, it might struggle, but, um, you know, 24 threads is certainly a lot. So now let's rerun that and let's look how, how quick it is. So now it's just basically finished. So that took one second. So it was effectively leveraging um, modern computers to be able to do this. So if we just run it again, look at this, what the CPU is doing at the bottom, it's spooled up all the CPUs at the bottom. Um, 
So before I end this video, what I thought I'd do is show you how you can sort of delve into results a little bit more. So if you go to Simulate Shadow to this frequency domain, and it says here, Output Velocity to Disk. Now, writing to disk is very, very slow, and I always say this, um, but quite often people don't, don't pick up this message. If you, if you touch the disk on the computer, it, everything gets very, very slow. So generally speaking, I don't write um, any much to disk. But if you change this from Output Velocity to Disk, from key vol key results to write everything to disk and then run it again um, you get this folder called fx domain so we can open that up and what it's plotting here is it's let's let's look at this one so this is basically the um, the actual signal that the so this is the v is voltage time so basically well, time voltage so basically this is the excitation uh, voltage and you can see the time scale uh, getting, uh, which way are we going? Oh, it's got a minus seven. It's actually getting shorter. The wavelength is actually getting shorter because we're going up in frequency. So that's the voltage, and this is the uh, current uh, response of the system. So you can actually access the, the full output of the, of the model here. Um, I think that's really it for this video. So it will not currently work with um, mobile ions, and it will, and um, yeah, uh, and it will not work with optical excitation at the moment. That will come later. Um, so that's it, really. I hope you found this uh, useful, and uh, yeah, I th I think uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.